The PayPal CEO has promised to shock the world and in today's episode we are going to find out is PayPal a stock that can shock our portfolio with a ton of upside. We're going to take a look at the historical performance of this company as always based on their latest earnings we're going to look at their top line revenue growth as well as their bottom line net income. We'll see how their health of the company's balance sheet is total cash versus total debt. We'll also see how they're performing versus some of their industry peers. We'll see what are the institutions doing. Are they buying or selling in their most recent quarter? We'll take a look at some insider selling that we have seen over the recent months. We'll also take a look at some of their financial metrics. And we will discuss what Elon Musk is planning to do. Are they looking to rival PayPal or could this be some kind of agreement? And as always, we will put them through our valuation model getting to what we believe the intrinsic value to be our acceptable buy price and see what Wall Street are forecasting as a price target over the next 12 months. So let's jump into the company now. PayPal over the last year is down around 15%. It is towards the mid to lower end of the 52 week range. We did recently see it around $50 and it doesn't currently offer a yield and we see its forward PE at around 13, one of the lowest in the tech sector. Over the last 10 years, what well, we can see, unfortunately, it has dropped significantly from its all-time highs that we did see in the middle of 2021 at over $300, which is a significant away from the current trading price. So can we envision a lot of upside for this company? Triple digits, 100, 200%. Let's take a look. Now on the top line for PayPal, we like to see 3 to 7 cent minimum year on year. 15.5 billion reported in 2018, 27.5 in 2022. So it has grown nearly double, in fact, over the last five years. And positive to note, they're expecting around a 10% increase to that December 2023 top line. And we will analyze that when we get that annual report. On a more granular level, we see increases every single year. It is moving in the right direction. So, so far, so good on that top line. When we compare that to the bottom line net income, well, 2.1 billion in 2018, 2.4 billion in 2022, and expected 3.8 billion. So, this is a company that we can see has grown over the last five years on the bottom line. But it is important to note that it has increased from 2018 to 2020 before dropping down in 2021 and 2022, although it is expected to pick back up. So, in conclusion, on the income statement, their top line and bottom line have increased a year over the last five years in fact but year on year we do note some inconsistencies total cash versus total debt well we can see here 9.1 billion of cash in 2018 11 and a half billion in their latest quarterly report so they have increased their cash position over the last five years total debt numerically and directionally well we can see it has gone from 2 billion to 11 billion so it has more than five times increased something to keep an eye on and something we will discuss when we look at the net debt to EBITDA metrics now taking a look at some of the competitors in the transaction and payment services we have Pfizer block Aiden and a few others so let's take a look how they have performed over the last year PayPal is down 15%, one of the worst performings. And we do know, in fact, in this industry, only two, we have Pfizer and Global Payment Networks, the only ones that were positive. And when we expand that to over the last five years, we can see PayPal is one of the worst performing. But we note for the majority of them, they did return positive returns. So it is something that PayPal should be looking to bring back to the company over the next few years. But as always, do remember past performance is never an indicator of future. Now, in terms of institutional ownerships, we can see around 68% currently with 11 billion worth of sales by these institutions. And during that same period, we can see nearly three times as much buying. So yes, institutions are heavily buying PayPal rather than selling with the largest increase in Q2. But I do want to point out that in Q3, more selling was done than buying. And in Q4, the same story. So in their most recent quarter, the institutions did sell more stock of PayPal than they did buy. But as always, just something to consider. Don't always copy what the institutions do. In fact, never copy what the institutions do. But you can use it as part of your own investment thesis. Now, 
as I always mention with insider buying and selling, insider buying is bullish. It does mean that management are buying shares because they believe that share price will rise over the period. Insider selling, as we do see here for PayPal, both their chief strategy officer as well as their EVP have been selling shares and we can see for a combined over 4 million but again, as always, insider selling just shows us that there are many reasons why insiders may sell, whether that's personal reasons or financial. So I wouldn't consider it bearish, but just something to note here that their insiders have been selling and we can see that they did sell, in fact, at a price lower than the current trading price. So in terms of the essential financial metrics, well, 71 billion market cap, a large cap company. When we look at the free cash flow per share, 132 in 2013, 443 in 2022. So it has increased over the period. Positive to note, but again, do bear in mind the inconsistencies. And I would like to point out that 2023, the free cash flow per share is expected to drop. Although 2024, it is expected to go higher. Sales growth, two things to note here. The first one, very strong double digit growth every single year other than 2022, which is positive. But the thing I would bring to your attention is that question of has that top line extreme growth started to slow down as both 2022 and expected 2023 is 8%. So we are seeing single high digits, just something to consider, but absolutely phenomenal growth over the last 10 years from around 7 billion to around 30 billion reported in 2023. Shares outstanding. They've also done share buybacks. They've bought back around 100 million worth of shares over the last 10 years so they have returned excess cash to investor pockets in that way and roic it is pop or in fact it is very positive to know as we always look at 10 percent or more the reason for this we believe that it means management are able to effectively allocate their capital so to see that consistently above that 10 percent level in the more recent period is positive and that 14 percent we can see in 2023 Operating margin and free cash flow margin, nice to see on both accounts, very strong and consistent on the operating. It is above that 12% minimum we look for, 16 reported in 2023. Free cash flow margin above that 7%. It has dropped quite significantly in 2023, but it is above the minimum. But something just to keep an eye on, given how strong it has been over the last 10 years. Net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization shows us two things. One, the balance sheet strength, and second, the dividend safety. However, PayPal don't currently offer those dividends, but do let me know in the thoughts in your comments below if you do believe they should start. 2022 then is saying that it would take them 0.1 year to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. 2023 at zero means that it wouldn't even take them one day, so a very strong balance sheet. Now, one thing to note before we do jump into that valuation is that we can see Elon Musk does have plans to turn Twitter into a PayPal similar system. But what is interesting to note, and it has caused some kind of uproar on Twitter, is the fact that we have seen they have created their X payments profile, which does mean or a lot of people are circulating that this could be a merger with PayPal. Some people believe it will be a separate payment. So it is interesting to know how they do move into this industry and whether or not it will rival PayPal or in fact it is something that will go hand in hand with PayPal themselves. Now let's jump into the valuation model. As always, if you enjoy the content values being provided, smash that like button, hit the subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now before we jump into the model, just to let you know that we have recently started our free weekly newsletter. The first edition did drop yesterday. If you want to gain access to that, it is completely free. Click on that pinned comment below, sign up. And over the next few weeks, we will be doing some deep dives into stocks that are on our watch list. So let's jump into the valuation and jump into Graham's model first. We have the stock ticker symbol at PayPal. We have the PE as well as the long-term growth rate and AAA corporate bond yield. This gives an intrinsic value of $82 as we can see our signal of undervaluation. Just remember though, we're not looking at any of these models in isolation and we will draw conclusions towards the end of the episode. We then have the multiples valuation companies in a similar sector and size, their PE multiples. We have the average and then we multiply that by the earnings per share to get an intrinsic value based on this model of $152, a second signal of undervaluation. They don't currently pay a dividend, so this model is redundant for PayPal today. We then have the DCF model with the free cash flows year on year, 
forward looking growth rate with that of the discount rate we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value add together with the cash subtract total debt that is the equity value divide by shares outstanding we get an intrinsic value again showing signs three signs in fact of undervaluation as always if you do click on that pinned comment below you can grab a copy of this valuation model to get to the intrinsic value of companies in your own portfolio and those on your watch list as well as your acceptable buy price so typically we start off with a 10 percent margin of safety if we believe it has a wide moat strong financial metrics good forward-looking data we can see it's a buy up to 99 dollars 85 15 percent it is still a buy in fact even at 25 percent it is still a buy so we do see a very very high margin of safety with paypal again at 35 percent and we can see at 40 percent pretty much at that current trading price so for today's episode of paypal and our estimates and judgments we see around a 40 percent margin of safety in terms of wall street well they see a price target of 75 dollars over the next 12 months so they see that upside sitting around 15 percent as always though do let us know your thoughts in the comments below do you believe that paypal is undervalued are you adding to it or maybe you were adding to it when it was at towards its 52 week lows and what do you see for the future of this company with the competition that we are potentially looking at with twitter now known as x have a great day don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed today's content catch you on the next episode and take care